number plates. We've all got to have them, whether we like it or not. They come in many shapes and sizes and are a regulatory measure for all road going vehicles all around the world. After living in Japan for quite some time, I learned that the Japanese number plate system was quite different compared to my home in South Australia. So today, I'm going to explain the different types of Japanese number plates and each of their sections and explain using examples what it all means, so that next time you see one, you'll know exactly what you're looking at. In Japan, there are two main types of vehicle classification, K cars and regular cars. K cars get a yellow plate with black letters and normal cars get a white plate with green letters. But each of these plate types also has a commercial variant to indicate that the vehicle is not for private use. These are often seen on trucks, buses, taxis, etc. In these cases, the colours of these plates are inverted. Commercial K cars get a black plate with yellow lettering, and regular cars get a green plate with white lettering. Aside from these two plates, there are two other exceptional number plates found within Japan. One is the Kari number, or temporary number. This is a plate that is used if you want to drive a car that is not road legal temporarily. These plates have a strict limit of three to five days depending on the circumstance. They are often used with vehicles that are currently not roadworthy and need to pass a shaken inspection. Often people will use these plates to drive to a mechanic to get their problems resolved, or to drive to the inspection facility directly. They are also often used when purchasing a new vehicle privately, as number plates are changed every time a car is registered to a new owner. It is sometimes advised to stay clear of these cars, as they may have mechanical defects and be dangerous to be driving around. The other exceptional plate is diplomat plates. It features a blue plate with white letters and the kanji soto, meaning outside, aka foreigner. This is used for foreign diplomats cars. It is quite rare to see these plates, however, but I did get the chance to see one in Kyoto, at the front of the French Embassy, which is right next to the university. Unfortunately, I did not take a picture at the time, but here's a photo I found on the internet of one. In addition to these special plates, Japan does offer a selection of vanity plates. Usually these are location specific, or they mark a special event. For example, this plate is for the Osaka Expo, scheduled for 2025. Japan also has the option for illuminated plates as well, which is actually pretty neato. However, Japan does not offer custom lettering on number plates. Only a combination of four numbers is possible, but I'll get into this a little later on. Now that we've gone over the selection of number plates available, let's move on to the specifics of what is actually written on the plates. This actually turned out to be quite an interesting feature of Japanese number plates, as I shall now explain. Starting from the top left is the place name. This is the location of the DMV that the plate was issued in, in this case, Shiga. To date, there are 106 issuing bodies across the 47 prefectures of Japan. Interestingly, some people choose to register their cars in more desirable locations. For example, rich people with high-end cars like to have a Shinagawa number because that's a rich area of Tokyo. There are also stereotypes of certain numbers like some people from certain towns are bad at driving or are very aggressive drivers. This is an interesting little cultural aspect I learned during my time in Japan. Next is the classification number. This is a series of three numbers. The first digit tells us the classification of the car. I've made a table here that shows what each digit means. Pause the video and take a look if you're interested. For example, these two cars both have a white plate, but the Integra starts with a 5, indicating that it has an engine smaller than 2 litres which it has a 1.8, so that checks out. Meanwhile, the Supra starts with a 3, indicating it has an engine larger than 2 litres, which it has a 3 litre, so this also checks out. This Land Cruiser and Hilux both start with a 1, because they're both classified as a truck, while police cars and other special purpose vehicles start with an 8. The final two numbers in the series are purely sequential, and don't sport any kind of meaning. In the past, number plates only had one single digit in the classification, but in the early 1970s they ran out of combinations and had to start using two digits. By 1998, they again ran out of combinations, so they added a third digit. This means that if you see a car with less than three digits, it's actually quite rare. For example, I spotted this cappuccino at the cappuccino specialist shop, and it had only two digits. This is remarkable, because any time a car changes hands, it gets a new number. This means that you'll lose the two-digit number if you sell the car or buy a car with a two-digit number. That means that this specific cappuccino is likely still owned by the original owner. Take a look at these two numbers. Do you notice something strange? Yep, they've got letters. In recent years, they ran out of combinations again and they started using letters. My guess is they just didn't have space for a fourth number. The next section is the Kana text. This again is quite an interesting one to note. 
It is used to differentiate the numbers, but there are also certain kana that are reserved for certain types of vehicle. I have again prepared a table that outlines this. Interestingly, US military personnel living in Japan are the only ones that can get English kana text. Also, because of this classifier, it means you cannot simply rent a GTR, roll up to Daigoku PA, expecting to flex on everybody, because all the car people will know straight away that you're driving a rental. Of course, the remainder of the kana are also available to regular cars as possible combinations. Finally, we move on to the license plate number. This is a series of four numbers separated by a hyphen in the middle. Interestingly, if there's a blank number, it's marked with a dot. Although I have also seen zero be written on it as well, and I'm not quite sure why. If you do happen to know why, please let me know in the comments. But I would say 99% of the time it is marked with a dot, and I very rarely saw a zero. As I previously mentioned, there's no way to get custom letters on your number plate, but you can pick your own number. This has led to some creativity in custom numbers, spelling out words phonetically. For example, this Mirage has the number 3610. To us English speakers, we see nothing special about this number. But in Japanese, 3 is pronounced mi, 6 is pronounced roku, and 10 is pronounced ju. So the number play kind of says miroju, or rather, mirage. It's a pretty cool play on words. Here's a table I prepared of some other examples that can be used to spell words. Now because of these phonetic spellings, some numbers are actually banned from being issued at all. For example, 42, or shini, which means to death. Or 49, which is said as shiku, or to run over. Definitely one you probably don't want to have written on your car. So as you can see, Japanese number plates are actually kind of fascinating. I for one am not a number plate nerd or a number plate spotter, but after spending quite a lot of time living amongst the car community in Japan, I couldn't help but find learning about Japanese numbers kind of interesting, and I hope you found it interesting too. Anyway, thank you very much for watching the video, I hope you found it interesting and informative. As always, if you enjoyed the video, please chuck me a like as it really helps small channels like mine grow. And if you want to see more interesting car videos, then hit subscribe as I've got many more videos planned for the future. Again, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.